Hello everyone, how to use your cat for astral projection. Um, <laughs> how to use uh, someone like this, <laughs> Minoko, Minoko, you want to say hi? Say hello. Yeah, say hello. Say hello, Minoko. You okay? <laughs> yes, how to use someone like this for astral projection. Now, you might be wondering how in the world can someone like this uh, help you? <laughs> but uh, yes, they can. And I'm going to explain that to you. Uh, this video might not be for everyone. It might be difficult to believe or understand. And um, I recommend, you know, if it's too much for you, uh, you know, go through my videos. Um, I'm not going to so much explain how to astral project, although this is a sort of method. Um, so, you know, if you have experience, uh, you'll understand this more. Uh, if not, that's okay. Um, and this might be a bit out there for some people in terms of understanding, you know, some of my experiences that I'm going to share with you in this video. So, cats, <laughs> how can they be used for astral projection? Uh, what are the benefits? Um, how can they, you know, how can they protect us in the astral plane? And in the physical too, and, uh, you know, can they talk, uh, how do I, you know, communicate with them, etc. Now, I know I'm going to get the question, uh, can I use my dog for astral projection? I did have a dog uh, some years ago, uh, I never had... I never had the experiences on the level of, you know, these uh, feline experiences that I'm going to share with you. So, yeah, I'm not sure really at all. If you understand some parts of, uh, you know, Buddhist or Hindu or Gnostic uh, understanding of, you know, the mineral plant and animal and then human kingdom, okay, those are the kingdoms that are generally understood for our soul to incarnate in as a sort of uh, soul evolution until we become what we are now. So, you know, we incarnate as a mineral and then well, many minerals and then many plants and then many animals and then a human. And one of the most elevated animals before becoming a human is a cat. And um, uh, even in the Gnostic teachings, it's understood that uh, the most developed kind of cat is a black cat. So, you know, if you want to practice uh, what I'm going to teach you here, um, and you have a black cat, uh, then you probably have a more developed sort of cat. Uh, and you probably have more uh, likeliness of uh, succeeding in this. But as you can see, my my dear friend Minoko uh, is not a black cat, and I've had uh, I've had an experience with her quite recently, which is why I'm uh, making this video. But I've had experiences with other cats as well before. And of course, you probably know that uh, cats were revered or almost uh, sort of worshipped in ancient Egypt as well. So yes, cats are just wonderful, mystical creatures who yeah, have quite funny personalities in the astral. Yes, you can talk to them. I've had this question as well. Um, you can talk to them in plain English, uh, and they will speak to you in plain English as well uh, half of the time. Um, it's not generally that they understand English, but the astral plane works in a way that the emotional nature of the astral is able to convert, is able to translate communication raw communication into uh, an understandable way for us if in those moments we want to understand on a sort of uh, rational uh, 
uh, English linguistic method or, you know, whatever kind of uh, language you speak. And this kind of universal translation system in the astral also applies to, you know, anyone else. Uh, you know, generally speaking, we won't have communication issues with anyone in the world. Most, in most cases, uh, if you're in the right kind of mindset, let's say, uh, you will hear uh, whoever from anywhere in the, the language you need to hear. So, yes, and that applies to cats and uh, other animals too, I assume, but I've not really spoken to many animals. Uh, a couple of experiences come to mind when uh, talking about talking to cats in the astral. Uh, there was a group of stray cats one time. I was passing them by and saying hello, uh, not expecting a reply as you do in the astral. Uh, you know, this was the first time I had heard a cat speak to me and one of the cats um, said to me, uh, you know, look over there. And I look uh, the opposite way uh, on this street and there's a group of humans on the other side and um he's got this energy about him this this little ginger cat and uh he's you know looking at this uh group of humans and uh he's like disappointed and he's he says humans are pets not cats and i said you know what do you mean by that and uh, he didn't say anything else. He just kind of, in in a very aloof way, uh, just turned around and, and walked away. But I found that quite funny because he was a stray cat, uh, quite obviously. And, you know, he probably goes on, there, you know, there were many houses in this area and he probably goes to different houses asking for food and... Uh, you know, in that sense, uh, he probably treats humans as pets because, you know, they feed him and, yeah, etc. So, yeah, another uh, experience I had was uh, being in a family's house and uh, there was this uh, nice family cat, but the family had uh, got uh, a new kitten and uh, the cat w was, the, the original cat, uh, the first cat, was uh, just very, very disappointed. And while the family were all, uh, you know, happy, celebrating the new kitten, being, being entertained by this kitten, uh, of course, the adult cat wasn't getting any attention, and he just looked very annoyed <laughs> that this family, uh, you know, got a new kitten. And I, I could sense that. And I said, what's wrong? And he said, they shouldn't have got a new kitten. I don't know why they got a new kitten. And yeah, he was just uh, distraught and he'll probably have to go through an adjusting phase. Uh, but yes, in this sense, you know, we can talk to, to animals um, and you know, whether you believe that, uh, that they can speak English or not, the amazing thing about the astral is that we can hear them talk in English uh, that portrays their feelings in a very understandable way for, you know, our intellect. Uh, but, you know, if you're not in that frame of mind and you're in a more mystical uh, frame of mind and uh, you're looking to connect with your cats in a more deeper way, uh, you don't need to, you know, speak English. As you know, you know, for anyone who has maybe a dog or a cat, you don't need to speak to them in in English, right? Uh, or you don't need them to speak to you in English for you as the owner, as the, f the friend, uh, to understand their emotions, right? So, yes, uh, speaking of these more mysterious, more, let's say, objective realities to do with cats, uh, I was living uh, in London for a couple of years, um, uh, renting this this apartment that had uh, this sort of balcony on the second floor, and somehow this uh, my neighbor's cat, uh, he would 
and my neighbor lived on the first floor, uh, this cat would jump up onto the, 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 climb up onto the second balcony. And, you know, I would have it, I would have this big window open and he would come. And after the months, uh, we became friends and he would visit me almost every day. And uh, yeah, at this point, I was not, you know, practicing anything specific to do with uh, astral projecting with a cat. Uh, but it just so happened that I had left my body and in my room, I was shocked to the core. Uh, you know, I felt a very quick uh, sense of fear because I saw this giant leopard. No, sorry, a giant. Uh, are, are some leopards black? No, they're not, are they? Uh, a giant panther, a black panther. He was big, and and uh, this cat uh, in waking life was uh, black and white. We called him Hello because you know he'd always come through the balcony and and say hello. <laughs> Uh, but yes, Hello was uh, black and white. Uh, but in the astral, he was this pitch black, big panther. Uh, and when I first came out of body and saw that, you know, I didn't recognize who this was. And it was this scary big panther. Um, but I knew quite quickly uh, that it was Hello because uh, he moved in a way that Hello always uh, plays. Um, he, he, Hello would always get on his uh, hind legs and uh, like kind of high five me. <laughs> and this is what this massive uh, panther did in the astral. And, you know, I couldn't believe that uh, it was him. Uh, yes. And, you know, so I had this experience uh, of, of seeing the more truer, astral form of this cat. And synchronistically, a few months later, I had read online that some people who have cats and practice astral projection have seen their, you know, this true form of their cat uh, being a big animal, a, a panther, a lynx, a leopard, a lion. Maybe not a lion, but, but perhaps. <laughs> um, and Yes, and this reminded me also that one of my first uh, astral projection experiences that I had around uh, like 10 years ago was that, you know, I came uh, out of my body into my room and there was this huge crow at my window, like, you know, the size of like, like a big dog. Uh, just pecking at my window uh, and I had you know uh, other synchronistic um, experiences with crows uh, during those days so yes and and birds you know as we have seen in many uh, like religions and spirit uh, spiritual teachings uh, birds are also one of those elevated very elevated and developed animals um spiritually speaking so yes cats and birds seem to be uh one of those animals that appear very large in the astral uh, i'm not sure about other animals uh, but that's what i can confirm in my own experience and so uh as you saw i have a cat uh, i got her from south korea uh, about a year ago when she was a kitten. Now, uh, she is obviously a year now, and um, I had been wanting to get a cat for a while because, you know, I just like cats. And, uh, you know, with my knowledge about cats, uh, you know, this, this practice that I'm going to tell you uh, from the Gnostic teachings uh, is something that I've, you know, been wanting to practice as well, because, you know, who doesn't want to, you know, astral project with their cats? And, um, you know, they can assist you in the the astral as well. Uh, but I had my first experience with Minoko, my cat, uh, just last week, and it took about a year. So, 
Uh, and I think that is maybe because, you know, she's developing, uh, she was a kitten, uh, and we also had the stress of moving from South Korea to Ireland. So, yeah, for whatever reason, um, it's only recently that I had an experience with her. And yes, um, I'll share that experience, but uh, generally speaking, here is the practice. It's really very simple. All you have to be doing is practicing astral projection and have a cat. <laughs> That's the most basic thing, really. Befriend your cat. Have a good relationship with your cat. Um, the practice, generally speaking, is to get your cat, uh, put him or her next to you on your bed, give him some strokies or whatever, <laughs> and, um, and ask your cat to take you out of your body or meet you in the astral, okay? There just has to be some kind of intention to go out into the astral. You can play with your cat, uh, maybe when your cat is making eye contact with you, you know, just ask, take me out of body, or help me in the astral, or help me with astral projection. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be with words, you don't have to say anything. You know, some people have a good deep connection with their pet, and that's what you want. Uh, because when you have this uh, strong connection, almost, uh, you know, telepathic connection with your cat, uh, you're able to send them your intentions, send them your desires for astral projection, to be in the astral plane with them, to intend to meet them, okay? So, of course, if you know how to astral project already, or next time you ever find yourself in the astral, call out for them, as you do, okay? You can call out uh, with your voice, or you can call out with your mind, and in most cases, especially if you have a very strong uh, connection with your cat, they'll come, to you. Now, it's not too important to have your cat necessarily next to you, uh, but it will help. You can just have her in the room or, uh, yeah, anywhere in the room is, is generally best. I assume, I've not experienced it, the, ex the experiences that I've had with cats are, you know, they've been in the same room as me, but uh, I assume that even if they're, you know, somewhere else at the other end of the world, uh, that you can probably have an experience with them if you have a, you know, a good relationship. Uh, but yes, generally speaking, have them in the room, um, peaceful, quiet, uh, you know, kind of focus on your cat uh, as you're uh, wanting to have an experience while you're sleeping. So yes, I've wanted to have an experience with my cat for about a year. The desire wasn't so strong uh, for a while, uh, but because it has been a year, I kind of, you know, got impatient and, you know, I, I said to myself, you know, I really want to have an experience uh, with Minoko now. I want to see her in the astral plane. And so uh, quite recently, last week, um, I uh, came out of body. I was in this uh, uh, city. I'm not sure whereabouts it was, but I had turned around and I saw uh, her in her astral form. Um, I knew immediately it was her. Uh, and she was this beautiful, uh, like, white, grey, snow leopard kind of vibe, you could say, like a, a lynx, really. She really looked like this, this big, white, fluffy tiger. <laughs> I'll put some images on the screen. Um, and it was just so great to see her like that, because she's quite a small cat. Um, and she, yeah, to see her like that was, was great. And uh, yes, I had read uh, online that these cats can fly in the astral, and you can also ride them. 
So that's what I did. Uh, I got on her. Uh, she started running. I was excited. Uh, I didn't know what to do or where to go. I just was enjoying the fact that I was riding on my cat, uh, riding on Monoko. And she inspired me uh, because of her her appearance uh, of like a snow leopard. So uh, I said, okay, take us to the mountains, take us to the mountains. And everything started, sorry, there's a crow right outside my window, um, <laughs> synchronistically. Uh, yes, where was I? I'm riding Monoko. Uh, and, uh, yes, going very fast, uh, the, 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 the scene, the environment starts to kind of shift and morph because she's going really fast and she, uh, she's, you know, it's like she's running really fast, but also gliding. She's, you know, running slash flying interdimensionally um and i'm i'm grabbing onto her fur uh, her thick coat uh, and also her skin and i hear her meowing uh a bit of a more robust deeper meow because i'm i'm kind of holding on for dear life but then i realize you know i'm in the astral i can control myself with my mind so i i i let go and i'm still riding her Anyway, so yes, uh, we arrive at this uh, beautiful um, snowy landscape mountain and uh, it's kind of, it's dawn and dusk and this beautiful uh, aurora borealis, if that's how you say it, uh, is above us, the green and blue and, and she's next to me um, and yeah, it's just, it was beautiful. Um, and, and this is how, when, if you are with, if you are successfully with your cat in the astral plane, uh, you can ask them to take you to places and they will also protect you as well. Um, if you encounter something, you know, darker or evil, uh, which is most likely not the case because you're going to probably be very excited and happy and, <laughs> uh, you have this lion or lioness next to you right um and you know cats uh, generally speaking you know are protectors uh when they become our pets as well um especially i would say on a mental level you know how a dog is very emotional right uh well cats seem to be very mental or, or in the sort of mental plane, and that that is a kind of superior uh, method of you know protecting ourselves. And so you know, cats in this way uh, are like crystals. And when you have a good relationship with your pets, uh, they become you know protectors. So anyway, I'm with Minoko in this landscape, uh, I just very spontaneously asked her to take us to a mountainous uh, landscape. Um, I get back on her and uh, I ask her to, okay, take me to see uh, the Divine Mother, my Divine Mother, right? The, the universal archetype, the, the cosmic feminine aspect. Um, I get back on her, she's running and then flying and then something happens. Um, everything starts to come to a sort of a barrier. Uh, anyone who has astral projected before, who kind of goes into different dimensions, uh, there is this sort of void between worlds. And I was, you know, consciously there for some time and, and I'm familiar with uh being in this this void uh between you know uh going to you know one world to another uh, and i was in this kind of limbo you could say for like a good 20 seconds or so um and i won't go too deep into it uh but i am then appeared with three women who are sort of like uh priestesses um they were kind of like guardians and now of course you know i had asked my cat to take me to the divine mother but there were these three uh 
guardians, you could say, sort of sitting on thrones. And um, yeah, one of them said, uh, I cannot allow it. Uh, I can't let you pass. I can't let you see the Divine Mother. And, you know, I was intending to see a really pure aspect, uh, you know, of the Divine Mother. And, you know, that would really be a very profound experience to go to these, you know, very high dimensions in, the, in nature and uh, see something like that. Sorry, my cat is wants attention. What do you want? What are you doing? She might be shaking the desk, I'm sorry. Okay, come on. Okay, um, yes, and so that's a, quite a deep experience there. That was quite symbolic. I couldn't understand, uh, I couldn't interpret that. I, I really didn't understand. I asked my uh, Gnostic friend what he understood, and yes, uh, it really made sense, you know, in the Gnostic teachings uh, and uh, you would have seen in, in the Kundalini Chakra series about the three minds. Well, uh, you know, the mind, of, uh, the intellect, uh, the, the emotional mind, and, uh, you know, the sexual mind. And this, ex this experience said to me that, you know, there is still some work, personal work, for me to link these three minds uh, in in more harmony, right? It, it, it relates to the chakras as well. So even though I didn't uh, see the Divine Mother, uh, this was a great experience for me to understand that. And, you know, since then I've been really, you know, contemplating on this aspect of the three minds. So yes, that's it really. Uh, you can use your cat for astral projection. Now, as I said, it took me a year with my current cat. Um, it didn't take me as long with that uh, stray cat that used to uh, uh, visit me, but I didn't have any intentions for that. So, yes, be patient. Um, focus more on developing a good relationship with your cat. You know, sometimes we can't be bothered with our pets or they annoy us. Um, and, you know, we want to have just good, positive, uh, happy, fun relationship with our cat, right? Like they're part of our family. You know, if you've chosen to have a cat, uh, then you've chosen, you know, to look after and, and have a responsibility for that cat. So, you know, what I'm saying is don't just go out to get a cat now just for astral projection. <laughs> um, you, you need to get it. If you want to have a cat, you get the cat because you love the cat and you want to have a friend, a companion, a feline animal companion in your life, not because you want to astral project. Um, it's okay if it's also to astral project, but have an authentic uh, relationship with your cat, a real bond, okay? Um, and over time, uh, in time, after you sort of almost, you know, begging or asking or really trying to connect with your cat and say, you know, take me into the astral, I want to meet you in the astral, or, you know, just uh, call on them uh, if you successfully come out of body and you will have an interesting experience. Um, you may see them in their quote-unquote physical form, uh, but most likely do not be surprised if you see your cat in a, a large form, in a lioness, lion, panther, uh, leopard form, uh, because that is truly how they appear. And yes, they can protect you, they can take you to places, and they just become your companion in the astral plane just as they are in the physical plane. And another great thing about cats is that they are sort of like, you know, Zen masters. Um, if you see and observe the way a cat is, uh, you know, they are not very distracted by things so much. Um, they are very impartial and they are very good at conscious sleep. If you observe a cat, uh, while it's sitting or sleeping, if you say something, 
you know, the, you'll see their ear move, right? Um, generally speaking, uh, most of the time when they're asleep, uh, they are aware of their surroundings and everything. And that's a sort of state, you know, that we, that we want to achieve, right? We want to be in this uh, mind awake body asleep state and that's you know something quite deep to achieve and when i say conscious sleep this is essentially what deep meditation is when you have you know when your body is tired exhausted and when you uh you know sit down for meditation and you you don't resist your lethargy you don't resist your tiredness but you let the body you know kind of fall into its sleep but without identifying and without getting caught up in the sleep and the traps of dreams. Uh, instead, you observe yourself falling or, or, or lowering into your subconscious, but with a conscious mind. And, and that's how, you know, we can penetrate into deeper parts of our psyche while staying awake and being able to study ourselves and yes that's really you know uh how how cats are and uh, it's not surprising that they are sort of you know natural uh masters at astral projection um uh, you know generally speaking as i understand it uh, and as most kind of uh teachings understand it every uh creature and every animal has an uh, you know, an astral body, and it, it's just part of our nature. Uh, but cats are just very good at astral projecting. Okay, so that's it. Number one, have a cat. Number two, practice astral projection. Uh, number three, ask your cat to assist you in astral projection. Um, and, you know, if you have spiritual practices, you, you know, you are doing uh, certain mantras and meditating every day, then you're going to uh, accelerate your process a lot more than, you know, just practicing astral projection. So yes, enjoy, uh, you know, if you have a cat um, and if you practice this, let me know uh, or, or comment down below if you've already had experiences with your cat. Uh, let me know if you've seen your cat uh, in uh, the large form that I was describing. And yes, thank you everyone, uh, and see you on the next episode.